lots of people always want to know how we got started and stuff, our history and everything. And we, it's very boring, really, because we just met at college. Just like you meet your normal friends. But it was quite magic, really, because we were all living in the same building. <clears throat> and if the powers that be had decided that we should live in a different building or something, we'd have never met each other. Chris and Johnny started playing guitar and stuff together, and um, then I joined. And we just played in our spare time with, with the intention of forming, f fully getting a drummer and, and starting gigging and stuff. And it just kind of progressed nicely from there, really. The reason why, certainly why I went to London, and I think why all of us went to London, was to try and meet the people, the musicians of our dreams, you know. So I certainly went there thinking, you know, I really want to meet some people that we can be in a band and take over the world with. And that's why it was so great, because we did. See, a lot of people think we're miserablists, which we're really not. Because a lot of the emotions in a lot of our songs are when things seem to start off badly, then they get better. You know, sort of fairy tale type scenario, you know. Chris will start with an idea of um, just a basic acoustic guitar and some vocals, maybe. And um, from that, that will be worked on with with the electric guitar and um, just to sort of flesh it out as a song. I'll write the lyrics. Write isn't really the right word, I just see what comes out. And Will will often tell me what's crap and what isn't. We all listen to each other, that's why that's why we're a band. We're trying to uh, achieve uh, very emotional music, um, strong songs, because once you've got the songs, then you can have, you know, that's, that's when you can start experimenting with sound and, and writing parts and arranging, and that's just, that's, so they're, they're kind of two separate things all together, really. It's like when bacon and eggs and mushrooms and chips are put on the same plate, become something greater and those individual parts. It becomes a cohesive whole that's tasty. Our sound is tasty. That is what our sound is. I just think all bands nowadays that come out trying to sing proper songs with proper tunes and with a bit of emotion in them and sometimes with some high notes in, you just get lumped in there and people forget to actually look at the fact that they're, you know, they're original songs, you know. Maybe some of our early, some of our songs do sound like other people but the fact is those other people didn't write those songs, you know. And when we sit down to write a song we don't think, oh right, let's make this one like, you know, Nirvana. We sit down to try and make a new song. I love Radiohead. I love who else would embrace those people, the Verve, Jeff Buckley, up in, yeah, great. I'm not worried about it in the slightest. In fact, it makes me laugh because it's just, it's great. I'd rather be compared to them than Madison Avenue or whatever they're called.
between the four of us, we probably listen to almost everything, you know, folk music to, to sort of funk and, and dance music, and then, you know, see a classic sort of singer-songwriter, your Beatles, David Bowie, and all these sort of people. It's just everything, really. And I think that's, I think that's one of the reasons why we, you know, we've got quite an interesting sound, because we don't really try and conform to any one particular sort of genre of music, really. Flaming Lips, Radiohead, Neil Young, Bob Dylan, Tom Waits, uh, the Sp Sparkle Horse, Idle Wild, Embrace. I like a lot of people. I, I sort of grew up in my in my teens listening just purely to the 70s black music. Really, Will loves Irish music. It seems to come together nicely into a, a, into our sound, which works. Touring has been um, a whole cavalcade of different experiences. Some bits are great, like playing well and meeting people and seeing girls, that, and you think one day, one day, we'll come back and you won't be able to resist us. On the other side, you've got things like service stations, which just start to become tedious. And I probably can't do product placement, but you know, if it wasn't for ginsters, pasties and stuff, we'd be really fed up by now. when that song came about. We were in recording in, in Wales called Rockfield Studios, residential studio, and uh, it was a really, really clear, starry night. And we all just had, we all came out in absolute amazement because none of us had seen the sky that clear. The number of stars was just ridiculous. So that's why I always think of that when I, I hear Chris sing the, the lyrics in that song, Look at the Stars. Got really good memories of that place, so, so I attach that to the song as well. I don't think we're that successful, really. It's just, it's been great so far, but if you said to uh, you two, you know, our Coldplay and you, you know, you're really successful, aren't you? They'd laugh, because we haven't really done much yet. I want people to say, you know, nice things for years to come. You know, and for couples, when they're like 60, when their kids are sort of listening through their record collections, you know, you know flicking through their record collections to, to find one of our records and their parents to go, yeah, we love that band. Because I just remember the other day, my flatmate was talking about loads of records that his parents really liked and he really likes them now. So if we could do that, that'd be wicked. I want, you know, I just love it, we love it. So we just want to keep loving it, really. Spider web, I'm caught in the 